We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are Three, easy, but because two, they are hard. One, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Hello. Happy Wednesday afternoon. I hope your Wednesday is going great. I've been really tired, but I can't sleep, so I thought I'd come on and talk some space stuff with you. If you'd do me a favor and share this out, I would appreciate it. And if you haven't already, like Adam Tilted TV and turn on notifications so you get a notification when I go live. I'm just sharing this out real quick and then we're going to get into today's topic, which is pretty exciting. Today I want to talk about just how big is the solar system. Spoiler alert, it's pretty big. Um, the reason why this came up for me today is because there was an article that I read this morning about um, the finding of some new evidence to support the existence of another big planet beyond the orbit of Neptune. Um, this planet has been called Planet X or Planet 9, uh, but there, for a number of years, there, there have been scientists who have been looking at the movements, hi Franco, of objects that are on the outer edges of the solar system and the their orbits don't make sense unless there's something else out there that is influencing them influencing them so i want to talk a, a little bit about that but before we do i want to just talk about how big the solar system is so we can really understand the impact of this new discovery um, also, shout out to James for my awesome hat with the constellations. They are green, which is fun because when I put on the green screen background, you can see through it. <laughs> but thanks, James. Okay, so let's take a look at the solar system. And sorry, this went off. Let's see if we got this back up. Okay. <clears throat> so, we've got the sun over here. That was bad. I'm going to start over because that what I just did right there would cause confusion in a minute. Sorry about that. All right, so we got the sun. Okay. And my head is blocking it. Let me move my head out of the way. Sorry, I'm going to get really good at doing this pretty soon. I promise, you guys. I'll put myself over here. How about that? Okay. So we've got the sun here. For right now, we're not going to worry about the, the diameter of the sun. Okay? Because... That'll just add complications to it. But let's just say that what each of this distance, each of these blocks is 10 million miles. All right. So we're going to start our counting from the edge right here. So Mercury is 38 million miles from the sun. So that would be almost four, three. So Mercury would be about right here. All right, 38 million miles. 
Venus is 68 million miles, so almost seven. So five, six, so right here is Venus. Earth is 93 million miles. So there's seven, eight, nine, just above there. So here's Earth. All right, so Mar uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars is 128 million miles. So that's almost 13 of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So Mars is right here. Those are the inner rocky planets and the asteroid belt, of course is between here. Now Jupiter, Jupiter is quite a bit out. It is 500 million miles. It will not fit on this paper. There are not enough squares. I'd have to go off the edge quite a bit onto another sheet of paper. So this scale is not going to work. So let's try, let's try a different scale. Um, Astronomers, when they're talking about the solar system, because the solar system is so big, and you know, even if we use 10 million miles as a single unit, we're still we don't have enough room on a piece of paper to to map out the scale of the universe. So scientists have created a unit of measurement called the astronomical unit. or AU. And AU is the average distance from the sun to the earth. So that's one AU. Okay. So if a square equals an AU, then we've got the sun here. Mercury is about 0.4 AU, a little less than half. Venus is 0.7. Earth, of course, is 1. Mars is 1.5. So here, we've got them all squished together now. Mars... Venus, I mean, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, okay? Jupiter is 5.2 AU. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. This is Jupiter. So look at how much distance is between... Mars and Jupiter. And of course, the asteroid belt is in this region, as are uh, dwarf planets. The dwarf planet Ceres is at 1.5. Sorry, 2.8. So almost three. So Ceres is a dwarf planet in the asteroid belt, and it's right here. All right. Jupiter. Saturn is nine and a half astronomical units. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. That's Saturn. Look how far out we're getting. Uh-oh. Oh, look at Jake. Sorry, my phone keeps timing out. I should have turned that off. All right, so Saturn, way out here. Uranus is 19.2. Okay, so what was Saturn? Nine, so I gotta go another 10. One, two, three. Uranus. Look at that. 
Uranus is farther away from Saturn than Jupiter is from the sun. That's crazy. Neptune is 30. I don't know if I have enough. Yeah, here we go. So this is Neptune. Neptune is here at 30 AU. 30 times the distance from the sun on average. So you can see there's a lot of space out here. And there are a lot of objects past here. Of course, Pluto is past here. Pluto is at 39 AU. Here's Pluto. What's at 39 AU? Pluto is one of the nearer Kuiper Belt objects. There are a lot that are way, way further away. <clears throat> so that gives you a little bit of an idea of how gigantic the solar system is. Um, so remember that term AU. AU is the distant, the average distance from the sun to the earth. And we're going to use that as a unit of measurement to look at uh, some other objects in the solar system. Okay. So I want to refer to an article on The Verge. And I'll put a link to this in the comments. So you can take a look at it if you like. And uh, this article is about the discovery of a very distant object. Um, it's a tiny rock that is nicknamed the Goblin. Its official name is TG387. It was spotted, um, first it was spotted in 2018, <clears throat> and then uh, they've been continuously studying it since then to, to find out exactly what it is they're looking at. And uh, they've, the all of this, these observations have revealed that this object probably takes about 40,000 years to orbit the sun. That's how far away it is. And the closest it ever gets to the sun is 65 AU. 65, that's the closest. Um, and that's, the closest it gets is farther away than the furthest away that Pluto gets. The furthest away Pluto gets is about 49 AUs. Um, so this object is way beyond Pluto, way beyond Pluto. It also, uh, this object is also in an area where we found other interesting distant objects and the, their orbits around the sun really, really suggest that something with a lot of mass pushed them into these orbits. And they're far enough away from the other big masses in the solar system, like Jupiter and Saturn um, and the sun, uh, that they look like they've all been influenced by the same thing, but it's not any of those things. So it again makes us wonder if there might be a giant planet out there. It's quite possible. If it is, I mean, it could take tens of thousands of years to make an orbit around the sun, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be surprising that we haven't noticed it yet, because um, it hasn't even made it one trip around the sun during any modern time. I'm trying to get this focus to lock. I don't know why it keeps trying to refocus. 
Okay, so I'm excited about this discovery for a couple of reasons. One, it just reminds us that we don't know what's out there. Even in our own solar system, there are still lots of things to discover. And two, it re reinforces just how vast space is. 20,000... 20 to 40,000 years to orbit the sun. But it's, it's, it's going really fast. Let me see if I can, I'm gonna share. Share this with you. This is the diagram that they have on the Verge's website. So here's the one AU, 10 AU. 65 AU, way out here. This is the Kuiper belt here. This is where most, uh, this is where a lot of comets come from. Um, there are several dwarf planets in the Kuiper belt. Um, but the Goblin is like way past that, way past that. So, you know, what else is out there? I think we need to find out. We need to send robots out there now because it's going to take a long time to get there. All right, so one last look. I just want you to just remember how big space is. Except I think that, okay, good. Um, space is huge. And we're all crowded up here in this little itty bitty corner. All huddled up next to the sun for warmth. And Every, all the, there's a lot of interesting stuff way out here. And I want to know what's out there. <laughs> okay, so that's it uh, for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to look up. There's still a good planet party going on in the sky. Uh, Venus, pretty much gone. Um, she'll be back later in the year. But she's on the other side of the sun right now, so we won't be able to see Venus. Um, Jupiter... Still get a good view of Jupiter, um, but it is getting lower and lower in the sky, so you don't have quite as much time to see it as you did before. So if you haven't looked at it yet with a telescope or a pair of binoculars, do that while you have the chance. Saturn is up high in the sky. Most All of these are up if you look to the south, uh, between the east and the west in the southern sky. Um, it's where you'll see these planets. Saturn is sort of uh, direct, directly south, pretty much directly south. Uh, pale yellowish star, it's right above the constellation Sagittarius right now. And then you'll see Mars closer to the east. Bright, bright red fantastically bright. Mars is getting further away from us. We are getting further away from Mars. Um, but the global dust storm that was there has started to subside. So there still may be a chance for you to catch a glimpse of some surface features of Mars with a backyard telescope. If you get some clear skies, check it out. And if you do, let me know because I've been having trouble with my telescope and I haven't been able to get it to to work right all right guys go out look at the sky and wonder what's out there i'll see you later